What's up, MFs? Welcome back to the Snake Pit. This is episode 197. Today, my guest is Nathan Higdon. He is the designer and creative director and owner of Pomona Bags here in uh, Lubbock, Texas. Pomona Bags is a company that uses plant-based vegan leather to make, like, right now he has handbags and little tote bags and uh, I think some skirts. Uh, yeah, they use cactus, which is a really cool process. We get into it in the episode, and, and it was, um, you know me, I've been skeptical of the vegan industry, but it is interesting, and it's, it's, um, it gives me hope about what these people are doing. You, you know, it helps people in Mexico, which is near and dear to us over here. So that's really cool. Um, I'm glad we did this one, and we were giving in, given insight into what this world is about. So if you guys would, please check him out. You know, if you're looking to buy your your partner something, that would be pretty interesting to buy and pretty cool, and it would help out, you know, local people. So uh, if you're new to this, please give us a I subscribe on YouTube under the Snake Pit Rattlesnake Roy. That is the YouTube channel, and we have like four different podcasts from to pick from. We have this one. We have um, Pirate Radio. We have Lords of Film. And uh, another one I do called On the Road. Those are all in the YouTube channels. But those are all different if you listen. So this one is the Snake Pit Rattle Snake Roy. Everything else you would have to search like on iTunes or Spotify. But if you do, please listen and then rate and review and, and uh, interact with us. That's, that'll really help us out. Comment, share it, anything. Like it on Twitter, retweet it, repost it on Facebook, anything. Just uh, give us some, some comments, please, people. And um, it's free and it's easy. So that's an easy way to support us. I'm also on Patreon, patreon.com slash Snake Pit Studios, where we do extra stuff. Um, and the Snake Pit or SnakeRoy.com, where I have t-shirts if you want to buy some and support us. So thanks, guys, and I hope you enjoy it. We're here. Um, getting close to episode 200, people. Please, man, can you introduce yourself? Let us know who you are and kind of what you do, please. Uh, my name is Nathan Higdon. I am a fashion designer and just creative in general kind of thing so shout out to jill for putting me on to you yes she, sir she I, like you just said she kind of forced yeah forced you to come <laughs> kind on, of forced so. the issue but so that's pretty I appreciate cool it. yeah uh, yeah that's really cool and i saw you do so first of all I, you're a fashion designer mm-hmm. but that's what interests me is you do bags yeah yeah can you tell me about those uh okay so my bags that i do i make them all out of cactus leather that i get from mexico so it's it's vegan and it's biodegradable so most vegan leathers that you'll get from like bags at stores or whatever they're going to be like pvc based so it's like plastic like already bad for the environment but oh, just, didn't know yeah that. so they just slap a vegan label on it be like oh we're actually good for the environment or whatever but that's going to be in a landfill for like thousands of years so but my bags the cactus leather it like biodegrades after like it'll be all my bags will be completely gone after like 20 years so it's literally is it cactus leather leather because it's made from cactus mm-hmm. oh shit mm-hmm. have you seen the process it's pretty cool uh, yeah it's actually pretty sick they take like uh like those classic like beaver tail cactuses and they like snip a couple leaves off of each plant so they don't kill it and then they they like freeze dry it or something like dehydrate it and then mush it up into a powder and then put it over like a canvas base and oh, rehydrate wow. it and then it Damn, dude, that's forms like so they don't even so they, even down to like the saving the cactus yeah you know? yeah like it's like full-on sustainable like they've won a ton of awards and stuff where where are they where is this at in mexico in mexico i i couldn't tell you the name <laughs> yeah. of the town it was like a long name so oh man dude that's cool yeah so how did you when you when you wanted to do bags, have you always wanted to do bags? Like, how did you want, um, how did that start? It started with me finding the leather actually. Cause like I graduated and I was looking, I was looking for jobs. Uh, and then I was also doing research. Like when I was in school, like I focused on like more of the sustainable side of design and fashion. Cause it's a very wasteful industry and like going through school for it. Like it really opened my eyes to just, how bad it was and i was like i don't like i want like this is my passion but i don't want to be a part of the problem kind of thing and so i was doing research into like just eco-friendly biodegradable like fabrics and stuff for just clothes and then i found this cactus leather and i'm like ooh, that'd be awesome out of bags and then that got me like i've always kind of been into bags but i'm like 
more of a clothes maker. So I kind of just dove all in in the handbag thing after I found that leather because they like they started in 2019, I think is when they first opened their doors and I made my first order like early 2020. So they they were like just getting off the ground when I started buying from them. Dude, that's fucking cool, man. Yeah. So did you go to school for mm-hmm. for this? We're at, at tech? I, at tech, yeah. Oh, I started okay. off I started off in advertising and I got my I finished that degree in like three years and like I wasn't even twenty one yet and I was about to graduate college and I was like, ooh, I'm about to get a big boy job and I can't even <laughs> drink yet. It's <laughs> kinda of scary. <laughs> yeah. And then so like I'd been getting more into fashion during that. Like I was doing a lot of my Like I was a graphic designer. I was doing a lot of my projects over like fashion brands and stuff. So I was like, maybe that's actually what I want to be doing. And then I talked to the president of the design school there at Tech. And she gave me like a tour of the place and kind of told me what the classes and stuff were. I was like, this sounds fucking (laughs) sick as fuck. So I took like the first semester and then like you take like construction one off the bat and you like your first project is this little like A-line mini skirt that everyone makes. And like, as soon as I finished that, I was like, yeah, this is where this is where I need to be. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, uh, is that where you met Alyssa? I saw she she, yeah, modeled, she you. modeled for you. Uh, no, I met her through through Jill because she oh. had worked with Alyssa on a previous shoot, and then like me and Jill had just met, and I was like, "Hey, I'm doing the shoot for this bag." My model like just dropped out, and I was like, "Do you have anybody?" Because I made that skirt as well. Yeah, as I say, the mini skirt is a piece of yours as mm-hmm. well. Yes. And so, like, my model dropped out, like, the day before the shoot. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, do you have anybody that's going to fit this? And I sent her the measurements. She's like, maybe. And then pulled through with Alyssa. And Alyssa looked even better in it than my original model. So, <laughs> it worked out. Shout out to Alyssa. Yeah. Wow. Hell, yeah. She's Dude, cool. Yeah. That's so cool. So, so, right now, you're focused on, like, handbags and, mm-hmm. and then... And like, I'm starting to get in the clothes, yeah. Like the skirt? That you yeah, did. like the skirt. And I want to do a pair of like um, bell bottom <clears throat> pants out of that leather and stuff. And then I want to do some, start doing some jackets, coats, and stuff like that. And then get into more like, uh, like athleisure stuff as well. Like not with the leather, but still staying in that like that eco friendly kind of area with the fabrics. Like, uh, there's a bunch of, they've been making like progress in bamboo fabrics like using bamboo cellulose and stuff and making that into like stretchy material and that stuff is like super soft so i'm looking into making like kind of athleisure stuff out of that too for the brand so let me ask you this man because i like leather jackets Mm -hmm. and i like i've i've tried like don't get me wrong i've tried the 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 what is it called full full Faux Fo- Fo- leather. I've tried it. Yeah, it's yeah. stinky. Yeah, that's why I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. It's, it, made, it made me stink. I didn't mm-hmm. like that. I've tried it, people. Yeah. <laughs> so what is like the problem? What is like the, the issue people have with like leather, real leather, you know, or whatever? Like, how do you mean? It's because is it just bad for the environment to make leather it's like, like that? I mean, it's it depends on the process, like the tanning of the hides process, like the chemicals and stuff they use, like is really harsh for the environment. So it depends on how they get rid of it. And then plus like using beef leather or whatever, like the beef Uh, industry in itself is bad. It comes from, it comes from a cow. Yeah. I I get that. Yeah. And so, yeah. So is that, so you were just like fucking, I want you you really care about this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an issue. Yeah. Like you like, I'm not like, super vegan or anything like i'll, okay. I'll kind of stray away from it every now and then but like yeah i know people are gonna say that because i've gone on record talking about vegans sorry <laughs> you know but no that's why we're having you on because we get to learn yeah yeah so i'm not i'm not like super into veganism or whatever but i am like it's almost just like doing your part yeah you like, know what i mean of like if you like leather works, but you don't want to like leave that footprint behind yeah. or cause that harm, exactly. You find your alternative, but make it just as luxury. But that's exactly. also cool. You're helping out people in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're that's- like they're really starting to boom now. Like they they've collabed with like BMW and there's some other high fashion thing they collabed with too. Dude, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's sick. I'm like, it's cool because like the person that I contact to buy from, like he started off as just like a, a regular salesperson and now he's like chief salesperson now. So I've like got to see him rise through the ranks there and stuff. So it's cool. So how does that work? Do they just give you like a big sheet of leather? Or I don't. Uh, basically, like they have a catalog and they used to just have, it was just black and green when they started, but they've now got like, a, they're starting to do more like, here's our spring colors, here's our summer colors kind of thing and you can order them. Uh, but yeah, you contact them and it comes in like 
sheets. It's like three three meters by one and a half meters or something like that. And then oh, yeah, it's just big. big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the green is that. Was it like dyed that color or is it because mm. of the the work? It's tree? dyed that color. I don't know what color it ends up being like when they first finish it, but I know they do dye it. Okay. And that green was like pretty cool. It was beautiful. So you, you pulled the that, picture like, of earlier. type of tone. Mm-hmm. That'd be a pretty cool leather jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something you could do? Like a leather jacket? Mm-hmm. Damn, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like I like making clothes. That, that's a snap for me. But like bags, like I've really had to teach myself like all the leather work and how to put bags together and stuff like. I've been YouTube University since day one with the bag <laughs> stuff. Important stuff right there, people. Mm-hmm. Man. So they, 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 what do they like at that school? What do they teach you? Um, like it wasn't it wasn't really like art focused there. Like it wasn't like this is how you design something. It was like design something and we'll show you how to make it kind of thing. So it was more teaching you how to construct garments and then how to put like your creative portfolio together and like the steps of the creative process but like you can't really teach somebody how to be creative kind of thing you know they, they kind of teach you like the more technical stuff yeah yeah like um okay. so like when you're building clothes you start with like paper patterns which are like the puzzle pieces basically and so they teach you how to draft those from scratch like if you're making a pair of pants like you start with a big sheet of paper and they teach you how to draft the crotch slope and the waist and where to take measurements and all that stuff and then teach you how to put it together how to put a fly front zipper together stuff like that what um yeah because i know somebody who went to that oh yeah he did that i don't know if he he might still be doing it his name's will yeah i, I know so. audrey iverson i don't know you don't know that either no, I, I met her through jill we did okay. a project together but okay. she was a fashion student at Tip. okay okay so it's a pretty cool pretty good school would you say? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Like, there's definitely better. And when I was there, there was a couple of uh, professors that were just okay at their jobs, but mm-hmm. they've been replaced since I left. So I'm sure it's it's getting better and better. Dang, dude. So is this like, is this something you you would have saw yourself doing? <laughs> no. When you were in school? <laughs> Absolutely yeah, not. I can't believe this. this is, yeah. You like, already blew my mind. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Cactus. <laughs> Yeah, like even if you showed high school me, like what I'm doing now, I'd be like, who is that man? <laughs> That's really cool though. It's like it almost took you like touring it and just kind of getting your hands in it to kind of be like, this is what my hands yeah, need to do. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, like I've always been like kind of creative. Like middle school woodshop class was like the first creative thing I ever did. So fun. Yeah. Oh my god. I that was still that's still my favorite <laughs> class I've ever taken, dude. Same, dude. Like I learned so much and like making something with your hands and like knowing that this thing didn't exist before I came along and put it together. is just, that's the best feeling for me is seeing a completed product and knowing like I did that. Mm-hmm. Have you ever tried cactus? Like, have you ever, have you ever ate it? No, I haven't. It's pretty good. Really? I like it. That's what I was thinking. I was like, those are no, no palas. Yeah. <laughs> no palas okay. and beans and eggs. People will like, Wild. they'll like cut it and they'll chop it up and they'll saute it with like meat or eggs oh, or whatever. It's so good. Really? I remember seeing my granny, she would, no gloves, nothing. Just pick it up. Dang. Get a knife. Take off the fucking spikes. Or what whatever. a hard ass. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, dude. And I think some people like the the flour make jelly out of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've tried I've tried that jam before, but I've never tried just like straight up cactus. Does it have like a cucumber flavor since it's so watery? I don't even. I it's been a while since I've had it. Okay. But it, I think it just kind of like yeah a little bit. I would say actually okay, now okay. think about it. And then yeah, it's good with like eggs. Dang. Okay, I'm gonna have to try that now. <laughs> Yeah, man. Have you have you ever like? That's what I was gonna ask. But have you? Do you know much about cactus? Like, have not you just, a ton. Not, not I much. mean, like, I know, a lot of people like that shit. Yeah, like it's it's a cool plant, and like I don't know, like desert plants is like one of the only things that grows. I know it's like cactus is like real big in Japan. Like a lot of like American Southern stuff. Like there was like in the eighties, there was like tumbleweed farmers that would sell tumbleweeds to people in Japan that would just like keep them in their house as like. This came from Texas, kind what of thing. Fuck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they just have those things everywhere here. Yeah, exactly. The you just go along the fences. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, they scratch your car, man. Mm-hmm. Cause a wreck. Like got them on like pedestals with the lights and shit. Like, here's my tumbleweed from Their Texas. Piece. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, dude, I didn't know that. that's pretty cool. Yeah, they yeah. like they like the 
the, the, the J- Japanese like American culture. Yeah, all the Americana like, like, stuff so, is real so big there. cultures in America. Yeah. And it's cool because, like, all the Japanese stuff is real big here. It's either, like, anime uh, I and stuff. Love, I love fucking love Japanese stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, hey, man. Shout out to y'all. I want to go there one day. Hell yeah, same. Be so much fun. Mm-hmm. We got to go there one day, actually. Yeah. Dude, that's I would cool. I love to eat and I would love to get, like, Sailor Moon stuff. And- Hell yeah. What is Sailor Moon? Do you do you like that stuff? I like I, Sailor Moon. I never watched it, but I appreciate the aesthetic from afar. I like <laughs> literally grew up on this shit. I need to watch it. Honestly. I was gonna say I've seen a lot of it. Well, now that I think about it, it's all Jennifer who's been talking about it. Can so I can I see it? <laughs> yeah, look at oh, this. Nah. Oh yeah, Bella likes this stuff. How cute! Yeah. Look. And they have a lot That's of me. like collabs with high fashion <laughs> stuff, like Sailor Moon. Yeah, they're um. Who did they just make those boots with? I saw those boots. Those were fucking fire. Ah, who is I don't it? remember who it was. My sister watches this, actually. I was watching it with her. I remember that scene. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's pretty cool shit. Yeah, that's one of the OGs I still need to check out. Hold on. Yeah, it's those sparkly ones, I think. Yeah, they're, like, really beautiful. Like, yeah. Hold on. Jimmy Choo. Jimmy Choo. Who, who are some of your... Look at that. That's actually... Beautiful. Yeah, those are sick. Is it hard to walk in heels? Um, depends. That looks like those are hard to walk <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah. I would bust ass immediately. Yeah. That actually might not be that bad, but like the really skinny ones that you just kind of step into. Oh, that yeah. looks really skinny. <laughs> that's pretty cool. You got ankle support though with this whole thing going on. Oh, okay. That's fair. That's think, fair. Yeah. yeah. Who are some of your fashion inspiration? Do you have some? Yeah. I think my biggest influence design-wise would probably be Yoji Yamamoto, like just as one designer. He's a Japanese designer. Is that Y3? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, that's him. I like I like his designs because he mostly works in like just black, but his silhouettes are also distinct from one another that yeah, I'm a, creates I a used thing. to kind of get into that, mm. and that's who I... He was one of the first yeah, ones I learned yeah. about. Like, it's like him, Rick Owens, Raph Simmons, like the Lords of Darkness kind of thing. Rick yeah, Owens yeah. is pretty cool. I yeah, like, yeah. Rick I Owens like is this cool he's, motherfucker. He is, though. His life is just, yeah. <laughs> he is. Yeah, that is wild. Like, Where's he it? literally wears these things every fucking day. Serves every day. I think about, like, what would it be like to meet him? right like i feel like it would just be kind like, of like, like an experience for somebody like you you would probably be in heaven yeah but yeah. me i'll be like what would i what would i even fucking say like, yeah if he was like hey can we do a podcast i mean no i don't know i don't know what <laughs> i, I would know talk, to talk about to you. <laughs> yeah dude he, he just seems like he's it's his world yeah literally uh, and his girlfriend or that lady what's her, is that his girlfriend? Yeah. wife i think it's, it's partner partner, partner yeah. yeah she's pretty cool too he's got a different partner or an additional partner as well Nice. Well, mm-hmm. when you're that guy, I guess yeah. you can do whatever. I literally think it's this person. This is the person that's been taking care of his TikTok. I thought that was him. No. Looks like his son. He's got cool hair. I, I mean, when I see shit like that, I kind of want to go blonde. I've but done it I a couple times. Then I'm like scared because then I redo my hair. Yeah. Over. That'd be pretty cool though. He's a cool guy, man. <laughs> I like I like Y3 though. Like I know yeah, a little bit yeah. about Y3. And, so those are some of your yeah, inspirations. Yeah. Him and then if I had to na- name like one house, it'd probably be Prada. Like I really like they're kind of just classic silhouettes design. Like they're really they don't really bank on like their logo or anything. Kind of like Louis Vuitton or Gucci does. Like they plaster that stuff over everything. And Prada's just like, here's this dope thing. And then here's our name. Super small kind of yeah. thing. I didn't even think about that. Mm hmm. Louis, Louis does Louis yeah, Vuitton is like, hey, yeah. Louis, that's an iconic These are, yeah their monogram everybody recognizes that and it's because they plaster it all over everything I actually saw recently a, a guy who makes like custom like uh, I don't know like jewelry and custom shirts mm-hmm. that have like some something similar to that I don't oh, know really? what the fuck his name is but Dang. I'm like isn't that like yeah. illegal <laughs> yeah watch but, out for the law <laughs> yeah yeah I remember like when I was into Supreme like the the fake Louis yeah, Supreme yeah. before they did an yeah, official that official one. That one was cool. Yeah, I was it like, was. man, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I, I kind of used to be in this shit. Mm-hmm. Man, this is fun. Yeah. I like this. I like <laughs> Hell yeah. This. I like Rap Simmons too. Yeah, he's yeah. Fucking, I love Rap. He, he's a really cool guy. Yeah. 
I used to, well, actually, you, one of my old friends used to really be obsessed with this guy, and he would just show me all this shit. Yeah. And they're, they're like, like they're older, like 2000 shit. I really liked. Mm. I would see it, and I'm like, man, this. Fuck, yeah. Where the fuck, like, for me, because I'm not that invested, I'm like, where the fuck does that come from? Yeah. Like, in your mind, like, yeah. what the hell? And people love that shit. Mm hmm. Raph Sims is another one of those where it's like, it's very like silhouette based design instead of logos and shit. Jeremy Scott's pretty cool too. I love Jeremy Scott. Yeah, he does some crazy shit. His R. Little, R. P. Mugler. He does uh, the wing shoes, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I like those. Mm -hmm. Are shoes something you would do? Eventually, yeah, I want to do shoes. I'm not who. Oh, did he, didn't he just die? He did. Yeah. Um, he was very known for just making these beautiful constructed pieces yeah. around the women's shape, a woman's bodice. So everything is very contoured. Even to this day, he uses these like lines that almost his fabrics like cut into the body to like give a woman like a really harsh, defined mm. body shape. It's beautiful. Yeah. Like all the tailoring on his garments, like they really like fit to that. He's model. like, yeah, this is probably one of his like. That's how I know about him. Yeah. No, yeah, right? yeah. He's well for no, known for that. Now, I mean, he's it's very his line has gone very mainstream with like Megan the Stallion wearing it. Yeah, it's more inclusive. Um, like who is that other fellow that just died? He didn't just die like a few years ago. He had like blonde hair. A lot of people really liked him. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do he's know who you're talking Kendall about. Jenner. That's how I know again. So stuff is getting shout out Mugler. Hey. Mm hmm. <laughs> Love I'm it. interested to know who's like in charge of it now that he's gone. I don't know. So how do you like? Is that something you would like to do eventually, or like just, you're just inspired by like, just like that's I, a fucking like because I'm asking like how do you? I'm asking you because you're like the first guy I've ever talked to who's into this and mm -hmm. who's, who's done stuff because you have stuff to show for. Like how do you become that? How would you become that? You know, you just. You just let your vision come yeah, to life. Just like you say, fuck it. Yeah, just think of cool shit. Like I like, like you just gotta trust yourself. That like, like I have to tell myself all the time that like I like cool shit. So if I make something that I like, then it's gotta be cool, right? <laughs> one of the one, one of the things, things of like if you market it and you sell it, isn't like I yeah. support what I'm doing. I'm yeah. happy about it. Yeah, Either exactly. Just be attracted, just that. Yeah. In general, well, yeah. respect it. I think that was one of the things Raph Simmons said. Like, mm -hmm. I hope this makes sense because they're like. Why do you, why don't you have black people on your runway? He's like, I model stuff that for things that after me. Yeah, I'm not black, yeah. so it's like after me, I'm like, Damn. yeah. So it's like you have to like it. Right? Mm -hmm. That has to be like shit. You. Yeah, like. exactly. You can't you can't go into the creative process saying I want to make this to sell it. Like you have to say I want to make this to make it, and then hope people buy it kind of thing. Because that like being genuine with yourself and your creative process, like that's gonna. That's going to do more for you in the long run than trying to make something that everybody wants kind of thing. Yeah, yeah man. So can you explain to me, I'm not familiar with handbags. Mm -hmm. How do you create a design for a handbag? Like, okay. Like the shape. Yeah. What is it? What is it that comes out of it? Because uh, you said you're doing a new one, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm how doing... does it come out? Okay. So the one I'm shooting tomorrow, it's, uh, it's another tote bag and it's like inspired by like by an axe head so it's like it starts like here and then it goes out like that like mm -hmm. an old school axe head like i was playing i was playing a video game actually and i was using this big ass axe and i was like that fucking that axe head looks sick and then like gears just kept turning and i was like i'm gonna make a tote that looks like that and see how it turns out and it turns out pretty sick so i'm excited I like to shoot this, it. this love letter one yeah everyone seems to like that one a lot yeah I wasn't honestly I wasn't that's my least favorite one really <laughs> yeah like I felt like it could have been it could be better like I'm probably going to do a, a 2.0 version for this February like I want to do kind of like a love themed inspired thing every February nice I've actually I have um a prototype bag with me I wanted to show you guys okay. like so you could like feel the leather and stuff yeah okay so Sweet. this is a very like rough like this is the first version of this bag so don't judge it too harshly but Gee. oh cool it's pretty cool the zipper is rough because i've i've taken that apart and put it together like four or five times because i'm trying to find like the best way to put this together before i start like making them to sell 
It's really light right off the back. That's yeah, what I tell yeah. People. Like this cactus leather good. is super lightweight. Yeah. And it's like, it's a lot softer than I was expecting. Like I made my first order expecting it to be like, like I'm just gonna, I yeah. I, I should have smelled it. Yeah, I should definitely smelled, smelled it. it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't smell great. I'll be honest. It, they've gotten better with it though. No, but it doesn't smell like plastic. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like he was saying like that faux leather that you'll mm-hmm. get, it's it like a burnt plastic yeah, smell yeah. or something. I and it's like, oh, fa- it's me. I was not a fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's, I'm hoping to have those ready for that Lubbock Live Festival that's yeah. coming up. Oh, you're doing that? Yeah, I'm going to be a vendor there. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, I was a vendor at the first one. Me and uh, Jeremy Couture, like we went to high school together. I've known him for a hot minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you were out there? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, we I were don't know. Out there yeah. fucking around. Oh, yeah. yeah. Long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, year ago. He's, but that's in September, right? Yeah, yeah, the 17th, I think. Dude, yeah, do that. So you're gonna be selling stuff. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna have a few bags. Hopefully, a few colorways of this one, and then I'm gonna have some sweatshirts and stuff with like an embroider, and then I'm have that mm-hmm. logo with the chick on the back of them and stuff. So, oh nice. shit. Yeah, I'm excited. So how long, like, does something like that, like one of those, how long will it take you to make it? Like, once you get it down. Once I get it down, probably a day. I can get that together. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Like this one, I, I got home this morning. I tore it apart and I worked out at eight. And I was like, all right, I got to get on this because I wanted to bring it so I could show you guys. So I, I knocked that I knocked this one out in like three and a half hours putting it back together. So and then each time you do it, like you get better at like knowing like the quirks of how the weather is going to act. Like when I go around this corner or when I put this zipper in kind of thing. And so it just gets quicker and quicker. So with your bags, are you going to do almost like limited amounts that you'll make for each bag? Yeah, yeah. Since it is handmade. Mm-hmm. Like eventually, like right now I'm doing it like I'll make one or two to do a photo shoot with. And then as people order them, I, I make them to order. So I'm not like, so I don't have waste, like mm-hmm. just sitting there not selling or anything. But eventually what I want to do when I'm like, when it's not just me making all the bags mm-hmm. is have like a, like I'm going to re- release this bag and do like a pre-order. So everyone that wants one can get one. But once the pre-order is done, like I'm not going to make That's any it. more of them. Yeah. yeah. So they're all still limited edition, but everyone has the opportunity to get it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Dude. Nice. Where do you make them at? Is your My house? house? Yeah. Yeah. I've got a sewing machine and stuff. <laughs> I have like, I have a desk where my sewing machine is at. And then I have like a like a little folding table with a cutting mat and everything. And that's where I, that's where I do all my work right now. That's awesome. Yeah. Hold on. Give me a second. These kids are saying something. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) That gives me a chance to open another beer. What happened? Oh yeah, you're good. If you need me to move, let me know. Yeah, they were like looking in here. Aww. They're playing around with kids. Damn kids. That's cute. <laughs> you know, shout out to them. <laughs> it's good to see kids outside play. Yeah, honestly, well, though. I feel like you don't see that very often. That's anymore. what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm glad. They're all playing there. Fortnite and shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but you pulled inspiration from a video game, right? Mm-hmm. So, how does that work? Does it like, like narrow at the bottom and then it comes up like a fucking axe like for yeah me. yeah like uh let me see if i can pull up a picture that i sent somebody can you send it to snake pit instagram mm-hmm. so we can pull it up here yeah 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 really cool i was blown away i did i was expecting to be skeptical about the fake leather but mm-hmm. i actually like this idea yeah and it's Pretty like, cool. it's, yeah, it's super soft and everything. Like I, when I first got the, the first order, like I was like, damn, all right, this shit's kind of impressive. How did you get involved? Like, did you seek that out or did somebody tell you about it? The, the leather? Yeah. Like I was just doing research on like blogs and stuff of, um, like, uh, like I was just kind of trying to keep up with what's mm-hmm. new in the industry and like the sustainable side of it. Cause that's really why I, I wanted to get a job with a big house, like, in a sustainable uh, position so that I could help them get better and like make a bigger impact there. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of found it was like, uh, cause there's, a- there's actually quite a few different places now that are making leather out of different, uh, different plants and stuff. 
Like, uh, there's one place in Italy they use leftover grapes. I sent it to the rattlesnake. Okay, yeah, I'll send it to Okay. Um, what was I saying? Leftover grapes? Oh, yeah, leftover grapes in Italy from all the wineries, and they make leather out of the like the grape skins and stuff, and like a similar process to the, the cactus leather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there's this other place. Um, I think they're in Spain, but they make uh, silk out of the inside of the orange peels, that white stuff. They make silk out of that. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, because like getting silk from silkworms and stuff is like you either have to murder all the silkworms or it's a super long, expensive process. And so like the the plastic based, like it's like rayon, like it's like a silk substitute, but it's all plastic based. So it's just as bad for the environment as murdering all the silkworms. God, I can't believe like they were fooling us like that. Yeah. It's plastic because plastic might be the worst thing for the environment. Yeah, for real. Here we have it right here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like what I was picturing. Yeah. <laughs> I I, like, I feel dumb because I didn't. I had no idea in my head. I was wondering. The axe head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the handle. Yeah, that's really. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty happy with how this one turned out because this one was more of like an original, like more of an original idea. Like a lot of my bags, I'm like, I'll see one. I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna put like my spin on that. But this yeah. one, I was like, I'm gonna see if an axe head will work as a bag shape, and then. Because those other ones are, like, very traditional bag shapes. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, which are still awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, but just very, like, you, you yeah. need a bucket bag or you need a... You yeah, know, yeah, like, exactly. This is, like, a piece. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, and that's going back to, like, the creative process. Like, my first few bags, I was trying to make... Like, I was trying to make stuff that would sell instead of mm-hmm. what I wanted to make. And so, like, I'm... Now that I've kind of, like, I'm a year into it, so I've kind of established yeah. myself a little bit. So now I'm trying to get more into, like, making what I want to make kind of. And I feel like wouldn't, like, shapes like this be almost, like, not like this, but, like, what you have on your Instagram. It's almost, like, foundational shapes. Yeah, like yeah, that. So exactly. It's like, how are you going like to run staples. before you can walk? Yeah, you know yeah, what I exactly. Mean? So. Yeah, and, like, I had a lot of learning to do, like, leather work-wise before I could even, like, attempt to make my own shape kind of thing. Yeah. Dude, I, yeah, I wish I knew much about shapes when it comes to him. But I just like it. It looks cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. thank you. Thank it's you. A, like you're saying, I, I really appreciate not even like when I do it, but when other people can create things with their hands. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, that's fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Like I'm constantly watching like how-to videos and stuff. I'm like stuff I would never even do. Just like watching how stuff is made interests the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. my favorite thing to watch right now on tiktok is like people who thrift mm-hmm. and they just completely reconstruct the piece or yeah yeah like people will that's pretty popular like making little two-piece sets out of a yeah. shirt and stuff yeah you know i wasn't a big fan of it until like when i thought about it like that like but that's the thing makes more though, sense like, to do it like that yeah why search for it if you can literally just make it you know yeah. some people just can do that yeah, that's when I was like, I had to take a step back and think about, wait, they're actually using their mind and their hands to do that. That's yeah. Cool. And then Even like you're deconstructing that piece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that, that, that's how I was at yeah. first, too. When people started doing that, I'm like, you're ruining like vintage Tommy. Like, yeah. Well, like, I've, yeah, that is different. Like, that's how I felt like this. There's this guy named Guap Didim that we had on our uh, podcast. Have you heard of him? Uh-uh. I'm going to look him up. You're, gonna, you're about to be blown away. Oh, shit. Um, he, yeah, he does some kind that of. That is some fucking art. Um, But he had this. Why isn't it working? Maybe the. uh. Um, the thing is off. Is the what do I do? Huh? Is the hey? Well, not that. <laughs> 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 Fix it. This is what the fuck. Mm-hmm. What did you do? I don't know. <laughs> But no, he had this like really beautiful like woven blanket. It was like a Western blanket. Oh really? And he like cut it up oh, damn. to make like shorts and a jacket. And I mean, obviously he did it justice. But I was just like, did okay. that hurt? Did yeah. That, like it hurt me just to watch it. It would have hurt me for sure. So this is his work. Oh shit. This is also local. Yeah, he's from here. He just dropped some shoes. So he just pretty much gets just he just patchworks everything. That's sick. Um. But let me see. Oh, where's it at? It's still loading. Oh, hey, <laughs> you're going too fast. It might be way down there. Yeah, dude, he sold some of those shoes to an NBA player. Really? Yeah. Somebody just name? did like an article on him or like an interview. Uh, Guap did him. There, there it is. Those, yes. those shorts right there. Let me see if because there's like a video attached to one of these. Ooh. I think okay, it's this yeah, one. Okay, yeah, I've seen stuff like that. 
like taking like the old like rugs, I guess, or like carpets yeah. and like cutting them up. Try the short. Is that it? It's a. Um, Okay, Maybe those, are, it's those in, are pretty fucking hard. I was incredibly I think it's just like, sad. Yeah. Look at that. That's Look how, such a cool oh my God. <laughs> oh. I was like, no. <laughs> but he just also made it so beautiful. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's such a cool, both of them are really cool, actually. Yeah. That's pretty sick. Okay. <laughs> he is a tiny fella. He is. I don't mind. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out to him. Sick. Yeah, I just gave him a fall. He just sick shit. He does, man. He, yeah, he just did those shoes. Yeah, those suit and shoes are hard. Yeah, dude. He's like featured on uh, like high profile Twitter accounts and like uh, nice yeah. kicks and shit. Like, damn, dude. You're out here doing it. Respect the hustle. I don't know why when you go to that it, it doesn't do it. But do you, so do you have like do you have do you have faith in the fashion industry that they're doing um, right by us in a way? Not right now. No. Nah, especially big houses and stuff like cuz a lot of the big houses like I think it's like Gucci Chanel Versace, they're all owned by like one big corporation. And I think Tommy Hilfiger's in that too. But like, so they care a lot more about the bottom line than like the environment, I guess. Like it's a lot more business, I guess. Like they're really trying to like market and like they're trying to sell clothes instead of make art, if that makes sense. Uh, you know what I mean? So Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So like right now, especially with big houses and stuff, like, I think the more sustainable options that there are, like, the more, like, people are going to use them. But right now, it's still a bunch of old heads running things, and they're, like, money, money, money. I feel of, like I don't know, but I also understand exactly what you mean. Yeah. And I feel like um, almost, like, like, these houses have almost, like, they are turning into, like, fast fashion. Yeah. Or like they're kind of collaborating with anybody or they're putting yeah. their pieces on anything yeah. or they're just just to get that logo on there. Exactly. It's a hit, you know, well, yeah. Yeah, you're saying they're still a corporation. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They're still trying to make money. Yeah. They're corporate instead of artists now. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah. I mean, back in the 80s and 90s. like It's unfortunate, but you could get away with that shit back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit differently now. <laughs> I think it was more acceptable. Like what really makes me sad. And I know I'm just going to sound hypocritical when they do like mink. Like for oh yeah, man, that fucking just kills me. I'm like, God damn it. Cause I actually want one of those, yeah, but I'm like, so no, you know what? I'll I, take fake. It looks, it looks good as hell, it's but at the same cool, time, man, I yeah. really want one of those, but you know, I was just wondering, cause it is like, if anything I've learned doing this, it's not as black and white as it seems. Cause yeah. like, I understand why like things like Walmart and Amazon would do fast fashion because yeah. it's. Can't, people who can't really afford things can yeah, buy it yeah so like clothes for cheap yeah i get that man i get that it's just like the struggle is real like yeah. people like fast fashion is there for like people that can't afford it, like, it, it's good pieces. for them yeah exactly but when you see like tiktok people and stuff spend like five grand on like sheen or whatever and it's like come on now y'all could buy yeah. like and then better you watch, quality like, shit a thrift video yeah and half of the videos thrifted sheen or yeah. thrifted Fashion Nova. Yeah, I read like a an article recently that was talking about how um like exactly that like, like resale places are filled up with like low quality Forever 21 Sheen stuff and like people that actually go there to buy their clothes that they wear every day that they have to wear, they're like they can't shop there anymore. It's kind of low over quality now, right? shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's overpriced now. Yeah, it's overpriced, low quality. And so like the shit falls apart in a week. And like if you have five dollars to spend on it like two t-shirts that are supposed to last you the year like mm -hmm. and that shit's falling apart next week and even then shirts aren't even five dollars at thrift nah, stores yeah. anymore i've noticed that like i've gone thrifting Fuckers. i i <laughs> i got a, a blouse and i want to say it was like eight dollars <laughs> yeah when like i mean tops at goodwill or any thrift store used to be like three four bucks maybe you'd spend if that yeah like, 10 bucks on pants maybe you know and yeah because they used different. to savers used to have like 
ten dollar section, yeah, twenty dollar section, a dollar fifty version. You know, mm-hmm. man, that was cool. Yeah, and then buy clothes for the whole year for fifty bucks kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and now look at it. Yeah. I don't know. You really can't blame nobody, but fuck, yeah, yeah. it sucks. Like, it's, it's like just, everyone's to blame, but it's like no one's yeah. to blame at the yeah. same time. I guess that's why we're here to educate them. Yeah. <laughs> And educate ourselves. So exactly, exactly. Look at me. I was I was not on board with the leather. Now I am actually because this is really cool. Again, I, I did some green leather plant, green leather pants okay, made from no, cactus I, would be actually I pretty remember, cool. Wow, I'm, not I'm, for the, I'm gonna not make you cactus. some. I got you. If you do, I'll wear them. I remember I almost purchased these these green bell bottoms. Really? They were green lace up bell bottoms, Ooh. and I goofed. I goofed. <laughs> they were sold out. I'm, Damn. Usually I wear like black, mm-hmm. red. Yeah, that's I, about what I wear. Black is like. But I've become a good. I've become not. I'm becoming a fan of green. Yeah. I like green. Yeah, it's, green's a good color. It's a really good color. I like it. Mm-hmm. All shades of it. I don't mm-hmm. care. Mm-hmm. I might even do my hair like that one day. Shit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would never do that. I couldn't do that. Fuck <laughs> that. I, 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 I kid myself. I, like I said, with the blonde, I'm like, man, I want to do that. I was actually watching a short of, um, like a Instagram short of, is that what they're called? Like a um, reel? Yeah, reel. Yeah. Of uh, Ozzy Osbourne. He had mm-hmm. red hair. And mm-hmm. I was like, man, I kind of want red hair. Yeah. That's fucking, every day it changes, man. <laughs> fucking changes every day. Is that how you that. feel about making this stuff? Do you, like, does your attention span change every day? Oh, like, yeah. like, man, like, I don't like this no more. Yeah. Like, by the end of every design, I'm like, I'm ready to get this fucking over with and on to the next thing. So, it, like, I hate, I hate that point when, I, when I'm, like, over it. Because I'm always like, is this even worth finishing? Like, is this even good? Like, good enough to fucking finish? But... You, you got to see things through kind of thing. Like you can't let stuff sit. Do you think that came from you doing motocross? I wanted to get into that. Like, yeah. <laughs> seeing things through. I, a lot of people don't have yeah, that. Yeah. I'm telling you, a lot of people don't have that. Yeah. Like it's the same thing with like getting into any sport or like martial arts or anything. Like especially like motocross and skateboarding. Like it's like, like you keep hitting this corner until you hit it right. Or you work your, like you hype yourself up to make this big ass jump kind of thing. And like seeing seeing things like that through and being like, all right, that wasn't like I was hyping myself up for nothing. Like it's it's cake now. How long have you been doing motocross? I had my first bike when I was five years old. Like I rode I rode a dirt bike before I rode a bicycle. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah. My dad was like real into it. He was pro for a little bit, like when he was a kid. And then like he's just done it all his life. And so I got into it. What was his name? My dad, Tom, Tom Higdon. Tom Higgins, I'm gonna tell my boss about that. And yeah. um, because he, he's into that shit. Yeah, like, like I, t- I told you. Already. Yeah, yeah, the enduro stuff. Yeah, yeah. So he did it for a long time, and then I was like, I was like eight or nine, and we were at a race, and he crashed real hard and broke like both his femurs and stuff. And being like an eight year old kid, seeing your dad fucked up like that, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay off the dirt bikes for a little bit. Oh shit. Yeah, and then my little brother, he's like six or seven years younger than me he was like i want a dirt bike like i see all you those trophies and pictures i want a dirt bike so then we got back into it and now we're like steady riding again kind of you're thing. doing it now yeah, yeah i don't race all that often because like if i break my arm or something like i'm like my my whole shit's fucked for yeah, a while. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> yeah so I, I stick to like trail riding and stuff like, i got i don't do a ton of racing anymore dude that's crazy I, uh, yeah I, I know my boss does it is it pretty big around here yeah a little bit yeah like it used to be a lot bigger here in lubbock there used to be like two or three tracks here but now there's just like one that's open like every once in a while here so yeah where's it at uh idaloo oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. there's like the the drag strip out there it's like right next to there the drag strip yeah Man, i want to go out there <laughs> it's, i've been meaning like me and you for it to go out there it's cool <laughs> and it's especially cool because like um like at the races they'll have them saturday nights and that's when the drag strip is popping off so We'll go and like race our motos or whatever, and then go sit and watch the drag strip, and then wait for our next motos kind of thing. Would you go out there? I've been there. Oh, you have? Mm-hmm. I've never been out there. What the heck? <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> yeah, no biggie. No younger. I'm there all the What'd time. With No, just the friends. Oh, oh so Never mind. I won't go out there anymore. <laughs> That's cool. I don't go out there anymore. <laughs> I'm fine. No, I, I know a few people who race their their cars. Or who they used to, I don't know if they did. <laughs> they used to chain their truck beds together. Oh, shit. And, and do like tug of war yeah. things. Oh, man. That's crazy. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. Like, you, if you win, you get the truck. You yeah. Know, say you get the, their bed of their truck. <laughs> I've seen whole axles full alpha it's trucks fucking, and shit. My, my fucking redneck has neighbor used to do that. <laughs> yeah, he's the one who showed me. I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't know that existed. 
fucking truck tug but that's war. cool I, i've never rode one of those i want to try you never rode in a dirt bike or motorcycle mm-hmm. or nothing atv but not that oh really i don't fuck with atvs at all really yeah they scare me huh. they flip way too easy i raked one Okay. Yeah. <laughs> one of my friends in high school got into an awful accident yeah they flip yeah. super easy like i trust a dirt bike way more than a four-wheeler really yeah dude it's crazy mm-hmm. yeah man so you... mm-hmm. life lessons in that shit i'm telling you yeah, guys so yeah. jen said it the sports is the yeah. sports teach you life lessons they do i know. live by that mm-hmm. yeah. but um I'm gonna actually take a pee real quick so you guys can keep talking because okay. I've had too many beers. <laughs> I know I live by what he said. I always just I always say like growing up doing sports like you think it's like nothing, but now as an adult, it, it does like, teach you stuff. Um, I can really tell like who played sports and who didn't just yeah. off of, like how they react or just how yeah, they just a work ethic in general. Yeah, or just how easily people just kind of like nope, I'm not doing it. I'm yeah, like, you gotta do in sports. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. So, um, besides like the bags and stuff and like the skirt and the pants, are you going to do like, like how long until you start doing like the athleisure things? Um, I'm hoping next summer will be my first athleisure drop. Like I've got, I've got bags planned out until this time next year. Mm -hmm. And by then I feel like I'll be big enough to do a successful like athleisure, like full on drop kind of. Would you do it almost like ivy park style like pieces like that or like true like more wearable pieces because I, I love the aesthetic of ivy park like in yeah. just her camp the campaigns for yeah, it and yeah. stuff like that i don't know i guess it would depend on like when i get the designing stuff just seeing mm-hmm. how that stuff turns out i mean i'll probably do because like i'm doing these sweatshirts for the uh the music festival thing i'm doing some that'll just have like a little embroidered like a double p monogram for pomona and it'll be just like a solid color and then i'm doing like the same color and i'm gonna like use bleach to tie dye them and so and then bleach screen print my logo on the back so it'll be like a really crazy version and then a really like subtle laid back version of the same colorway so i might end up doing something like that for the athleisure stuff okay like doing like like you can get like laid back shorts like just solid black yeah like there's a loud and a quiet version of them kind of thing nice athleisure stuff i asked if he would like almost like campaign it like ivy park does like with the ivy park pieces what is that beyonce Mm -hmm. hold on (laughs) shit's pretty far that's her stuff this is her athletic line no, like Beyonce. I know. <laughs> but isn't there... Like, this is literally like Adidas. Yeah, she partners with Adidas to do that stuff. Or like... <sighs> so this is for... A... What do you mean? Never mind. It's just Forget like that. A, to it's just like a collab cut between all Beyonce shit out. and We're back. Adidas. <laughs> <laughs> Look how beautiful that is. I haven't seen none of this new stuff. I didn't know that's who who it was. Mm-hmm. Adidas always had some pretty cool people come work for them. Huh? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Like Nike's really running the game here in the U.S., but Adidas has the cooler collabs. I think. Is it true that Kanye is supposed to go back to like Nike? I hope so. Like I've heard the the Red yeah. October Easy Twos are going to yeah. come out this year, and I'm going to try to buy them. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> Those are my favorite <laughs> shoes of all time. Yeah, honestly. <sighs> please, please, please. Those were so hard. Uh, that's what I've heard. I don't know if, if it's been confirmed or not. And do you know? I no. don't. No, no. I'll have I hope. Him tomorrow. I'll see what's. <laughs> You're like, we just ask him. <laughs> I don't know if he's yes. heard anything. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Well, anyways, <laughs> tell me about like when. So, how many photo shoots have you done? You only has it just been one? Um, I do. I do. I try to do a photo shoot for each bag. Um, oh, okay. They've been getting more intricate. Like I'm getting people to model them and stuff. Like the first couple, it was just like um, the first one. I got one of my brother's friends. He was like starting to do photography and stuff. He's like, "Let me do. Let me do your bag stuff. Let me do your bag stuff." So I was like, "All right, cool, yeah." <laughs> and so he did that one. And then, yeah, the tote bag, he did all those. And then that love letter clutch, I took all those on my phone in my backyard and, like, just put that on a table. Down? Yeah. Jennifer, we're going to have to get you one of those. That's Can you cute. Like that one? Will you put a love letter in it for me? I got you. Okay. That's adorable. 
<laughs> yeah, and then and then I did all the the bucket bag shots. Panoma, right? Pomona. Pomona. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like saying, what does that mean? Does, does that mean something? Uh, Pomona is the Roman goddess of gardens, <coughs> and like overall, yeah. So that's what, that's why I chose that. Is like leaning into the like the vegan plant based leather and like the sustainable side of things. So I decided to go with like, and that's kind of like what the logo is based off of is how I see her, I guess. Mm-hmm. Is she spo- is she like portrayed with long hair like that? And, like, uh, classic things not really oh, I, I just kind I, of I, yeah i, I fuck with the parade yeah because <laughs> i worked with my friend is a tattoo artist and i can't draw for shit like if you saw my sketches of bags and stuff you like what the hell is this so i told him i was like this this is what i want and then we worked together and he he made this who's your friend uh ryan wolf W-O-L-F-E. oh yeah yeah i know who that is oh yeah i think where did i know him from i've known him from the past oh, really? go to monterey yeah, yeah, he did. That's where I know. Okay, him. shit. He's yeah. at uh, the brand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's done like half of my tattoos. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar with. I've seen his work and all that. He, oh, he, yeah. he so he designed that. Yeah, yeah. Shouts out to him. Yeah, shout out to him. <laughs> yeah, I remember him. That was a long time ago. He probably wouldn't know me by Roy now. <laughs> I went by a different name back then. But yeah, shout out to him. Mm-hmm. So, so she's a the goddess can you tell me again sorry the goddess of gardens and like just greenery kind of thing like farming agriculture kind of thing and so like i it took me forever to pick a name for the brand and that one's the one that stuck with me the longest and i was like because of the cactus leather yeah yeah like just leaning into the sustainable like plant-based kind of thing when did you launch this uh june of last year so yeah i just passed a year doing it how's it been pretty successful yeah it's been i don't know about pretty successful but we're getting there one step at a time you're still here yeah so it's I mean, been a yeah i'm still here and i'm very excited for year two like what we've got planned so yeah that one that first year is yeah, yeah that first year is rough yeah, yeah. i do well, i'm hair. saying when you can well, you, i do hair and i teach and so i always had to tell like our new ones like first year's the roughest it's yeah the year that you're the brokest you're making the most mistakes yeah you're literally just trying to build bonds just, and just trying foundation. to get good at what you yeah. do after I'll, that I'll, it's bombs away. i won't listen to none of my shit from the first nope. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I can't do it yeah i don't know lots of mistakes <laughs> lots of learning <laughs> yeah i'm excited to be done with the first year and on to <laughs> like just moving on what are yeah. some of the like biggest lessons you think you learned in, a, in the first year going back to the creative thing like making things that i want to make instead of things i think people want um and then just learning how to how to make the bags in general it's a very different process making a handbag than a dress or a pair of pants or anything like that like just teaching myself most of the leather work that i've learned um that's been the biggest thing and then Back in February, I started working part time at a, a a boot shop here, making custom cowboy boots. Right. Um, it's called BG Leather. They're over in um, that Cactus Alley. Oh, I know them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've been working there for a little bit, and I've learned well, I've learned quite a bit about just leather work in general from there. So, could you make boots if you could? Mm-hmm. I actually hey. made a pair of boots. I almost yeah, wore them really tonight, cool. but it was hot as fuck. So, <laughs> yeah, it is hot, dude. Uh, yeah, we went in there one time. Oh yeah. It was, uh, your friends right there, short and sweet. Mm-hmm. They're right there. Oh, you y'all know them? That's yeah. like one of my good friends. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. And then uh, El Mano Negra. Uh huh. I'm kind of familiar with them, so yeah, I went into that shop. Okay, one okay. I was like, Dang, dude. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. We make some cool shit up there. It's been a fun job, and I've learned a lot, so it's been a good experience there. Are you still there? Mm-hmm. Who are some of y'all's clientele? Because those are some pretty yeah, expensive um, fucking boots. Yeah, they are expensive. <laughs> he just made someone. He just made um. He's wanting to get into the sneakers. That's how I actually just ran into him at the the leather shop. I was buying supplies. He was like, uh, I don't remember what I was wearing, but I was wearing some sneakers, the like, cool sneakers. And we just got to talking. He's like, I run a boot shop. And he's like, I'm trying to get more into like making custom Jordans and stuff like that. And he's like, and I see like you're younger, you know, like more about sneakers. You just come in and then yada, yada. That's you how I get up with the give job. Give him my information. We got to get him on here. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That'd be cool. That would be, that would be cool. But he made a pair of Jordans for, um, I didn't know who it was. His name was like Co Wetzel or something. Co Wetzel? Yeah, yeah. No fucking shit. Yeah, yeah. He made a pair of Jordans for him. It was like his birthday last week. He like, he, the his tour manager like commissioned these Jordans for him. They were like, they were 
manta ray and ostrich leather. It was like the the bread colorway, like the black and red Jordan oh, ones. My I have those. Yeah, yeah. It was like black manta and then the red ostrich, and then he made like a custom box and shit. And People don't get mad at me, but that ray, like the manta ray, I mm-hmm. really like. Oh, yeah, it, it is very pretty. It's a uh, bitch to work with though. It's like super fragile. People also don't get mad at me, but I'm a big fan of elephant boots. Yeah, yeah. I would never wear them. Nah, I, but I've I've I'm had to make a few pairs on my them poor really? elephants. Yeah. Oh, fuck. we do a bunch of like like exactly. rare shit. Yeah, like the manta ray, the elephant, like water buffalo. We've done shark leather and stuff. Shark's pretty cool too. Yeah, the shark I, is pretty sick. I see. Man, sorry people. <laughs> I know. I feel so bad because like I'm. Dude, I'm the elephant with... would have. How did we cry? Yeah, I know. I was like this poor elephant, and then I go home and make my vegan leather bags and <laughs> <laughs> smelling like genuine. Yeah, leather. <laughs> so, but but he made some for Coetzee. Mm-hmm. Really? What the fuck? That yeah. guy's like huge here. Yeah, I don't know how how that came about, but. Yeah. It's really cool. Does, do you have a picture of it or is it um i don't know he wouldn't let me take a picture of him because he's like it was like a surprise thing oh. that his tour manager yeah oh. i mean he, he has the shoes now oh, so it's okay. no biggie but yeah he wouldn't let me take pictures of nothing i'm so shocked you, you've worked with elephant that's crazy yeah yeah where the fuck do you, i don't even know like where do you even get that he's got some connect in florida of course yeah do you think that he would from. ever work with cactus leather or like work with i like brought it up there or? and showed it to him and like i want to make a pair of boots out of them like eventually but he was like uh i don't really think like cowboys aren't really fucking yeah. with the cactus leather they're like nah give me that that ostrich or that elephant or whatever <laughs> you know i like ostrich boots yeah yeah my boots are ostrich I used to have some of those. I used to have a lizard. Mm-hmm. Lizard skin's cool. I like the the, the bass. You ever seen bass boots? Mm-mm. Those are pretty cool. Bass like the yeah, fish. Yeah. Dang, that yeah. must be wild looking. I I'm a big fan of that. Again, like the, the like the manta ray and the, the yeah. elephant. Those are like stupid expensive shoes. Yeah, but they're they're so cool. But I feel so bad. <laughs> I don't feel so bad about the manta ray stuff because of the crocodile hunter, you know, that manta ray took him out. So, well, yeah, but there's a little bit more plentiful than yeah, elephants. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, this is them? I, I, yeah, I'm a big fan of these boots. I just, oh, I shit. like them. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm a big fan. Yeah, those and there's wild. a bunch of bass everywhere. So, yeah, yeah. you can just fuck kill I don't, them. Yeah, others. I don't feel so bad about fish. <laughs> No, I, it's when I, like, I'm with you on, like, the boots, like, I'm, like, because I really like lizard. Look up lizard boots, please. Yeah, I'm lizard a, skin is sick. I'm a big fan of li- and I like lizards. <laughs> yeah, same. He just finished a pair of, it was, like, the shattered backboards, the orange and white pair, but I it was it was all lizard skin. It was sick. What the fuck? Yeah. How, how can I never heard of this shit? <laughs> I like the, yeah, uh, Tacova boots made some really nice ones. Mm. I like Tacova. Yeah. Those ones right there, Tacova men's. Where, where? Uh, top left to the second one. These? No, to the right. Okay. <laughs> to the left, I'm sorry. Not to the right. Yeah, those. No, to... <laughs> sorry, people. Anyways. This is my fault. Here they are. Shout out to Kova. Tacova makes really nice boots. They do. What's this guy's name? Hey, you work for? Uh, or the company? Uh, it's BG Leather. Just okay. Do they have Instagram boy. or anything? I don't know. And I feel bad being an employee and not knowing... We'll have to cut that part out. <laughs> We're back. How long? So you've been there for since February? February. I started. I did like a an apprenticeship kind of thing, learning how to make boots, and then like making my own pair of boots from scratch. Was oh yeah, like the, the final touch. Oh shit! Shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that's all. The black is manta ray, and then the red is ostrich. Wow. Hey, if I'm ever big enough, and you guys want to make me something like that, I will take a pair of those. Look at that. It's pretty. Here are the little. Okay. Yes. <laughs> One time I was at uh, Torchy's and I was with my friend Chapa and they thought he was Kowetzel. <laughs> oh. Everybody was just staring at him. <laughs> what is that? Those are nice. Yeah, we have some cool stuff. What's well, like the dyeing process? Is that. Do you have... I don't know. We don't do that. Um, we like. We hit up our leather providers and like they give us swatch cards like every six months, a year or so. Update us with what colors I've got. I like that. These are beautiful. Those are yeah. fucking cool. Purple's a pretty cool color. Yeah, many until they got to come on here. Jeez, yeah, we do. Yeah. I'll give them all this information. That's really cool. Um, 
So when you like, if you were to do like a different color leather, they would already have it for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but is it? I'm I'm assuming if it's from them, it's like good for the environment kind of deal. Or is that even possible? I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know honestly. Oh fuck, those are freaking cool. Oh, those are the shattered backwards. Yeah, yeah, those are those are just good stuff I was talking about. They're really cool. Because mm-hmm. I was thinking about that, like the dye is it? The dye, the dye is usually pretty right good. To the right. Yeah, it's like it's making it's turning the hides into leather. It's like those chemicals that are harsh for the environment, and like it just depends on how the tannery takes care of those chemicals after they're done with them, kind of thing. Yeah, those pythons are sick. These are hard. Yeah. yeah. I can see Josh wearing those. God, those are so pretty. What's Proverbs three? five what is that uh he puts like but what is it saying i don't even know. i have no I'm idea no i'm not like, like religious that. like that <laughs> i mean i noticed like inside that there something is written is yeah, that like his doing yeah he does it's like his signature kind of thing he puts um he writes something on like the like where your calf is and then when we're putting the souls together there's like a piece in there he'll write another thing in there oh he'll write different ones yeah yeah, yeah. like each pair has a different um what's verse, his name i guess uh brandon I don't know his last name. <laughs> it is Brad Glynn. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, shout out to him. That's pretty cool. I, didn't, I mean, I knew that he's existed. He's going to watch this interview and just sob. That yeah, he's still know his know. name. <laughs> he's going to fire you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, have you worked on those Jordan ones? Uh, did you I, work on them? I didn't work on those. Oh. Yeah, he, d- he did all those like in his spare time kind of thing. He was like, check these out. I was like, oh, shit. That's really cool. Mm. It's yeah. been a lot of fun working there. I bet, dude. That sounds fun. Mm. How are you working there every day? Um, not every day. Like we, uh, we've kind of we had another guy. Like it's just my boss that makes the boots, and like he's training me. But we had another guy that went through the apprenticeship kind of thing. He worked there for a couple of years, and then decided he needed a different job. Pussy. Yeah, for real, for real. Sorry. And so that kind of that kind of fucked things up. And so I'm like. I'm I'm down to part time now. Like I work when he's got work for me, kind of thing, which is nice because I have plenty of time to focus on my own thing as well. So I can't complain. So, so what's much. A, when you're not working with him? What does a day like a normal day look like? For normal you? day. Uh, usually I wake up. I try to get out of bed by like nine nine thirty, kind of thing. And I'll usually I'll I'll play around with the dogs, work out eat lunch and then i'll get cracking on what kind of dogs you have? i've got one is a, an akita husky mix and the other one is a like a bull mastiff mix so you got big dog like yeah this yeah big dogs. i've heard those akitas are mean is my, that true nah my dog's not mean huh. he well, well, he lied to me then <laughs> he's not he's not mean he's overprotective i got him from a shelter we got both of them from the a akita shelter. is like the the japanese dog right um, not mis- or Korean? That's a Shibu, I think. The Akita, but this is it's, an American an, it's an American Akita. Yeah. Ah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's half that, half husky. So he's got, he's got like super sharp blue eyes, but he's got kind of a reddish brown coat. He's a real pretty dog. Um, he was super overprotective when we first got him because I got him from a shelter, like the Lubbock Animal Shelter or whatever. Dude, hold on. Before he's 106 dogs they took in in the last two days. Damn. Oh, no. I saw that on Facebook. Go adopt people. Go yeah, for real, for real, adopt. A hundred and six. That I was is like, fuck. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it made yeah. me sad when I saw that. Damn, that makes me sad, that? man. To tell people to go fucking adopt, man. <laughs> um, we gotta advocate for it. I'm about to go out there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Come back with two or more. Or foster. Right? People yeah. can foster. Yeah. But yeah, so you got him from... Yeah, I got him from there. And they said he was there for like four or five months. And I was like, bro. And it's like, when you go in there and you walk around those cages, it's like a prison, man. I can't go in there, dude. I I walked in there because I went in there with my friend because she was wanting to get a cat or a dog. And um, we walked in there and I fucking, I was crying when I left, dude. I was like, I want to take all these guys with me. I I couldn't go. I I volunteered in there too. When I I was like, man, I can't come back. There's No. no way. There's no way. It's rough, dude. I like it. Like if you have a heart, you do not leave there. Yeah. A little... A little heavy. I yeah. was like, so you, please, everyone, get in the back of my <laughs> truck. Let's go home. <laughs> so you got him. What about the other one? Uh, the other one we got from a different shelter. It wasn't the the Lubbock Animal Shelter. It was like a, it was like the Haven or something. It was a Is small that the one, out one there? here. Uh, it's out by the like the 
I know the fire academy because my brother's going through that. It's like out like northeast of town, I guess. Northeast? No, I don't know that one. No, I know yeah. there's one near Level End. That's the one we okay. went to. That it wasn't that one. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Dang, that makes go me feel there. even worse that go there's out. like multiple animals shut down. Hey, I got. I got to. <laughs> You gotta do my job and bring to light yeah. these things. Go out there, please. Go if out you there. can, at least go out and play with them. Yeah. If you can't fucking do nothing, yeah, just spend a day playing with the. Or pups. Um, they take. Um, they take donations. Yeah, like, like food pet and smart, stuff like that. Yeah. Food, pet. If you were like me and a delinquent, you can do your community service out there. <laughs> That's another way. I'm just saying. Yeah. So shout out to the, all those good people yeah, doing yeah. the God's I, work out there, man. Yeah, they're stronger than me. I can do that shit. Yeah, man. Fuck. So you. Wake up, hang out with your pups. Hang out with the pups, work out, and then I get cracking on whatever needs to get done for the day. It's either making patterns for the bag, designing the bags, and building a bag. Like usually like the the axe tote that took me like with working, it took me like four or five weeks to get like from from the first pro like from making the patterns in the first prototype to like the finished one that I sent you all a picture of. What kind of workouts do you do? I'm sorry, I was I was thinking about that. No, you're good. <laughs> I do I do mostly like calisthenics, like body weight stuff. Uh, I do a lot of like boxing and stuff too for my cardio and you shit. Boxing? Yeah, yeah, I like boxing a lot. I watched. I got into it because um, during the pandemic, like MMA and UFC was like the only thing going on. So me and my friends got into it, and I was like, damn, this shit's sick as fuck. I gotta give major credit to Jen. She got me into kickboxing. Hell yeah. Now nah, I just fucking love it. Yeah, it's it's addicting. Now I want to fight people. Yeah, <laughs> I know. No, I'm just kidding. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm looking for a reason. <laughs> no, no, hell no. I ain't trying to go to jail. Fuck that. We're gonna shot. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I don't want to fight, but I can punch you. But yeah, really if, good. But if somebody were to yeah, try me, exactly. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> we might have to go through. Right? Like, no, I, yeah. I don't want to get jumped, but I feel like I've if had I so get in a fight, I could probably hold my own now. <laughs> I've had so much fun doing that uh, because we do kickboxing, and then sometimes, like, I'm gonna start up tomorrow back with my friend. He does um jujitsu. Okay, I'm about to get back into that. Nice, yeah. And then me and my friend Bradley. He usually is right there, but mm -hmm. for whatever reason, he's not here. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, he took me to the Jet Li movie, not Bruce Lee movie. Uh -huh. I was like, motherfucker, man, this is awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I've been trying to. Yeah, I like, I like doing that. Yeah, shit, man. It's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's cool. Yeah, like that, that. That's what got me into exercising more because, like, I kept trying to do it to like just like look better kind of thing, and I was like, this fucking sucks. Like, I hate doing this. But then, like, punching a bag, I'm like, oh, this is fun. And then it gets. Bro, you that's what it. got me. I was like, man, fuck this. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna run. Like, what the fuck. No disrespect. For me, I, like, I run all the time. <laughs> oh well, yeah, yeah, but yeah. No, no disrespect. It just—it's not my I thing. I was like, yeah. no disrespect. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> I mean, I want to look all right, but I'm yeah, trying to look all like like Thor. Yeah. So it's like, but then she put me in the king box. I'm like, man, this is fun. Like, if you're a, like, I speak for us because that's what I know. If you're a male, and you're out here like dealing with things go yeah. punch that fucking yeah. bag go dog punch that bag man. man go punch that or kick it whatever for hey, real though i'm telling you end of a long work day where it fucking sucked go out there and punch that bag a few times you're tired I'm and then you're you. like all right because we do it I on got that out of like we do it on wednesday so mm. it's like middle of the week yeah hump day shit it gets me through the week i'm like man these two days sucked yeah and then i'm like oh man and then it's like sunday like i get the sunday blues i'm like you know wednesday's right down the corner yeah i yeah. can't wait to go back to work doing the kickboxing yeah i'm telling you kickboxing or oh boxing and uh journaling if you're a male and you need to get some shit out yeah those two things i'm trying to get it more into journaling yeah yeah it, it's tough at first because i'm like not like anyone's gonna read it but it's like who cares kind of thing but you gotta get like if you get it out of here then you're yeah, I've also off. i've also had this too so yeah <laughs> I yeah like yeah, doing this, so yeah whenever it's all said i'm like if I need to write some things down, I'll write. I'm just trying to help you guys out there. I'm oh, telling yeah. you. Good looking out. I'm just telling you. Go adopt a dog and yeah. punch a bag. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, That's it'll, all you really need. That's change. what life's about, man. Punching bags and petting dogs. Oh, oh, I fucking love my dogs. I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I have my little nacho and then there's three other ones in there. I love the dogs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Her little goblin. I have a dog in Gomez. <laughs> I don't like when people tell me like they don't like dogs. I'm like, what the? I, okay, I can get. I love cats. Yeah, but I can get why you don't like cats. Yeah, yeah. I'm and not a huge cat. Like, I'm pretty fan. understanding. Mm -hmm. But when you say you don't like dogs, I'm, I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. I'm gonna kick you. Yeah. So <laughs> I always think because I remember reading something that said that 
at a dog's most mature and most intelligent on a human level, they have like the mental capacity of like a three year old. Mm -hmm. So they're literally just toddlers. Yeah. yeah they're, just kids. They're, whole, yeah. they're babies. They're yeah. toddlers their whole life. Like their whole life is just like my person. I want to sit with you. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's like, how do you not like dogs, dude? They're just yeah. like buddies. I, I can understand <laughs> being afraid of dogs, I guess. Like yeah. even attacked or whatever. Yeah, but I get like, that. Just like not liking dogs because they're mean? like, yeah, because they're like <laughs> clingy. Yeah, because that's they're essentially clingy. what it always is. Yeah. They're just clingy and excited. Yeah, people are always like, cats can take care of themselves. I'm like, I don't have to clean out a box of my dog shit every week. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I like cats, like I said, but they're pretty shysty, evil little things. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. They're, cat um, they're fuckers. Like... Yeah, I trust a dog more than I trust a cat yeah. for sure. Recently, I'm exposing myself. My cat fucked up my drawer. Like, uh, he. Uh, he broke the front of the drawer off Damn. and I have an apartment. So I'm like, wow. And so like <laughs> when I saw that, like he was just staring at me and I was like, I fucking hate you so much. I just fucking hate you. And he was just looking at me. Yeah. Like, doesn't even <laughs> acknowledge that. Yeah, or and I'm like, you're literally just an animal. You don't even know what a fucking drawer is. <laughs> Fuck you. Like <laughs> cats, cats do things. Else, cats but... are the worst. And he just, okay. So nonchalant about it. Me, yeah. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> yeah, fuck. I love cats. Fuck church. Fuck, fuck church. Cat's name. Fuck oh, okay. Not, not, not fuck the church. <laughs> fuck church. Much cat. <laughs> cat's name is church. How did that come about? Pet cemetery. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sort of you like nice. you like Super watching cat. movies? Yeah, yeah. I'm a big movie person. Thinking about watching Nope. Yeah, I want to go see. I heard a review about, about it. I'm mm -hmm. not going to spoil nothing, but I heard it's fucking weird. Yeah, I mean, I expect nothing less from a Jordan Peele alien movie. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Go to, can you go to Twitter, actually? Let's watch this video. This is a funny <laughs> This is a funny video. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for that one. Uh, what am I looking at? Uh, go, to the, the, go to Rattlesnake Roy. Go to How the, do I do just it? go to the, uh, go to search Twitter. Um, go to Rattlesnake Roy, please. Go to the account. Uh, we're starting to load it. Hmm? Uh, go to my life. And then that's a funny video, but no, <laughs> I saw that earlier. <laughs> Shout out to my boy Charleston White, but no, uh, keep going, keep going. <laughs> Ron, what are you liking? Oh, that account is fucking hilarious. I want that shirt. Though. This right here, this video. We're we watching this. Yeah, I just unmuted. And try to act like I know what's going on. I just watched the movie Nope by Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele gave us Get Out. Oh, it's gave us us. Now we're good. Yeah. Jordan Peele gave us Nope. Do I understand the symbolism in the movie? Nope. Nope. Do I understand what his aim was? Nope. Nope. Do I understand what the hell horses had to do with what was going on? In Watch the movie? a minute. Nope. Can I tell you, I think you should go see the movie. I would encourage everybody to go see this movie because I know it's going to be 57 11 opinions about the movie. Nope. The movie was shot beautifully. Jordan Peele and the people that work with him, y'all have exceptional camera skills to bring characters to life on camera. Kiki Palmer, baby, you fine. <laughs> I love Kiki Palmer. <laughs> Same thing. Get out. <laughs> Get out Before Note came out, I was, on the <coughs> I was on YouTube and they told me horses had something to do with being extraterrestrials. Y'all lied to me. Y'all lied. Because I was waiting for a horse to transform like Optimus Prime. <laughs> don't, don't, don't big screen. I don't cause... know homie's name. But homie, the British act, but homie, you can act your ass off. You can play any kind of black man you want. That guy's, he's time, British? And nobody this guy, yeah. He, I didn't know that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. There was a scene where British people are good at hiding that shit. Really yeah. Bad. Idris Elba? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to my, shout out to Barstow for putting me onto this guy. He's funny. So funny. Yeah, I was like, huh. And then I kind of like read some more reviews. I was like, oh, it makes sense. Okay, okay. I'm excited. I think I'll see it. I'm probably going to watch it in the middle of the week. <laughs> it's long. It's like two hours long. Dang. Is it really? That's what he, he reviewed. We got to listen a little Aren't his other films kind of like that? I think I didn't, so. I didn't watch. Um, Get Out is kind of long. I, I don't think Us is. I didn't long. watch Us. Nah, Us isn't that long. It's okay. I thought it was all right. Is that the one with the people living in the gram? Uh, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't yeah, watch that one. Yeah. I watched Get Out. I like that. Yeah, one. Get Out was really Get good. Cool. Do you Us? like Do you like scary movies? Yeah, yeah. I'm real big into horror. Did you see uh, the new trailer for Halloween Ends? Oh, I haven't watched the trailer yet. 
I'm not huge into watching trailers. Like if I know Neither I'm gonna, you. if I know I'm gonna watch the movie, then I what's the point of watching the trailer? Yes, we're a fuck up. Yeah. I love trailers. Yeah, I think right now people are, well, they're just really trying to get people back in the theaters. Yeah. So I think they're trying to make these trailers as enticing as possible, they but should, they're yeah. giving out a lot of the story. Yeah, line. they show the whole movie, and it's like, all right, I know mm -hmm. exactly what's gonna go on. Yeah. That's why I don't watch trailers anymore. I'm a big movie buff. I have a movie podcast with him called Lords of Film. But yeah, I like Riley horror movies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love horror movies, and so I, I fuck myself up every week, just raw dogging whatever I found. <laughs> you know, like I just I pull up, and I am just genuinely like, okay, that's what I watch straight now, like every time. You know, and, uh -huh. but it's it's so much fun having that experience yeah. versus like, oh, I saw that in the trailer. This is probably yeah, happening. exactly. Or just anticipating yeah. putting things together because I. I if I watch it, I'm going to pay attention to detail. And before I do yeah. it, I'll pick it apart. Because I feel like that's how they go in making the movie. Like, they don't, they're don't. they not like, ooh, we're going to put this in the trailer to tease yeah. people. They're like, like you should watch the movie by what itself. What I do think thing. is really cool is, so they're <laughs> shooting the Barbie movie right now. Yeah, I'm pretty um, hyped for that, actually. And I, <laughs> I've been, that's, yeah, I think recently. But there was this whole, like, controversy of like they're they're releasing the whole movie essentially they're like oh, on twitter putting yeah it all, all the pictures and like how like it's essentially like spoiled but i think they filmed almost all of it on a closed set yeah and so i think this is like promotional essentially what they're yeah. doing or they, like they know what they're doing like, it's people, a hype thing I don't think people realize that. it's not it's coming all, out until next summer they, these people spend millions like they know what they're doing thinking this out yeah of course they exactly. know what the fuck they're doing yeah. you know? i'm so excited team. for it yeah i'm I am so too, excited honestly. I wish I could get excited. I, I, I just, gonna I'm, gonna I'm gonna movie? go watch. I'm yeah. gonna watch it. Yeah, movie, yeah. Of course, but I'm like, There's I like Ryan so Gosling. Many He's yeah. This year and next year for Halloween, it's gonna be just Barbies and Kens everywhere. Yeah, it is. Pretty cool. I love it. Mm -hmm. We can be Freddie and Velma, or Freddie and Daddy. I'm like Velma's not even <laughs> Freddie's. I've been watching Scooby Doo. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Scooby Doo on HBO Max. Hell yeah! I was watching that before you before you got here. I was like, man, I want him to know I'm watching this. Now I'm telling you, I'm so fuck, I'm gonna change it. No, I watch cartoons all the time. No worries. Yeah, my sister told me about uh, all the Scooby Doo's on HBO Max, mm -hmm. and I was watching um, Scooby Doo and Scrappy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I felt like a kid. I was like, fuck, I love yeah, that shit. Man. I love cartoons. I'm so, oh man, I fucking love Scooby Doo. Don't get me started. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are some of like your favorite horror movies though? Horror movies. Uh, number one is the thing. I think uh, that's playing at the album, isn't it? This month, um, oh, in August. It? So in Ooh. August, there's it's gonna be like a John Carpenter movie month. So every Tuesday, they're showing a John Carpenter film, but they are showing the. Thing. You wanna go with me and Bradley? Sick. I the think guy we're doing supposed the thing, to be here. We're gonna go. The oh, Fly. Sick. Okay. I can't watch The Fly, but I'll watch. The I've thing never seen you. The Fly. No, I don't even. No, I don't even think that's John Carpenter. Um, but yeah. No, they're doing every Tuesday. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's hype. I'm gonna have to check that have out. Have you seen the trailer? No. Oh. Have you seen the promotions for uh, Prey? Yeah, I'm, I'm super hyped for that. I'm a big Predator fan. Yeah, yeah, dude, me too. Yeah, and it's super cool that they're doing like they have an English version, and then they're gonna have a version of the movie where all the actors are speaking like legit Cherokee and stuff. No shit. Yeah. I didn't think, uh, yeah. Oh, man, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for that because I'm like I watch everything with subtitles anyway, and I'd I'd love to hear the Cherokee language like spoken like that. Shout out to y'all. That's yeah, really hell cool. yeah. Now I know you, the actors are legit. Yeah, and it looks fucking cool. It does. Have look you seen cool their, like, it? Like it's like you know. Like predator, right? mm -hmm. he he's he's hunting a a Native American woman. Yeah, and I think in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, I'm mistaken. So. I think it's like mid eighteen hundreds, early. 1800s. I have a feeling he's gonna sympathize with her. And he's they're not gonna, gonna connect. Yeah, he's not gonna kill her. Okay, okay. Because he saved her from the bear in the trailer. Okay. Spoiler. Uh, yeah, I only watched like the first thirty seconds of the trailer. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm pretty it's excited for that. It's a Hulu special. It's not even. Yeah, yeah, movies. it's a Hulu that, movie. That's kind of disappointing, but whatever. Bring back the creature features. Yeah, for real though. So yesterday when I was looking into this, <laughs> I, I had a phone interview yesterday and I was told to give a presentation on literally anything. Mm -hmm. And so I just said, fuck it, and did a presentation on the history of horror. Nice. And um, as I was listening to these things and reading these things over and over, it was almost like um, how horror always finds ways to reflect what's going on in society yeah so when the creature feature kind of started becoming a thing it was like in the 50s and 60s uh -huh. we as americans started seeing war and kind of the effects of like nuclear uh war 
You know what I mean? Okay. And okay. so they started kind of honing in on the horror of like, what if this war starts manipulating, you know, like, like the blob, like creating yeah, things, yeah. creating creatures, yeah. manipulating and, and mutating our animals That's and our, cool. our things. And like, it just takes us over because we yeah. beat it to death and we cook, you know, it's just like almost like what if it mm -hmm. will become the prey again. So that's kind of how the creature feature came out is okay. that's that was like film's way of like. That's cool. And then a lot of like current horror movies are very like social media based i guess social like, media based and i mean also like this new era of horror is very like art house but yeah um like with a24 just like a lot of these mm. movies coming out are there's it's storytelling you yeah. know so and i feel like that's kind of what's always like lacked from like traditional horror mm. is it's just kind of the story of the ghost or yeah, the murderer or really whatever on those like gory stuff uh, but, um but yeah it's like almost now it's like horror is now drama with like a layer of horror over top mm -hmm. <laughs> like a layer I mean, of that's something should be. Top. yeah yeah but and i think that's why like i always go back to it why hereditary was just such a beautiful film mm -hmm. it was this favorite. tragic fucking story of a mother losing her daughter yeah and it topped it off her mother is a witch and this was all yeah her mother was a yeah. shit that movie was wild <laughs> as fuck yeah that's why like i just completely honed in on that or like the killing of sacred deer like yeah, all these films are fucked but really yeah. cool yeah. terrifying okay like yeah. it's very like i guess it's like these films are getting more like complex or like yeah more, yeah like more like oh that could happen to yeah, me kind like of the thing characters instead of the have creature like, feature like the characters have like um i don't want to say like personality but they have like their own plots they have like their yeah, own yeah yeah okay yeah. well this one it sounds like because i heard her in spoiler she was like She's a woman in a, in a Native American tribe, and they're like, "Why are you hunting the men? Hunt." And she's like, mm -hmm. "I can beat all of you." Yeah. So she goes and hunts. I think she's gonna prove that she can kill this motherfucker. Yeah. And then they're gonna. Yeah, their their fight's gonna be badass. And they're gonna probably gonna. He's gonna let his guard down, and she's gonna kill his ass. Yeah. So that's my prediction. We'll yeah. See. I can't. I hope wait. so. I would like to see the yes. humans conquer the predator one time. Is the movie Prey based on a true story? Oh yeah. <laughs> that's one of the search. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Why the true story of? Hey, they they had what they what? Had, they had a oh lot, hell <laughs> they had a lot of, you know you know Native American lore it's spooky mm -hmm. it is spooky spooky man have y'all seen Bone Tomahawk? No. That's like well, a, who who's here that told us about this? Bradley you already know no it wasn't Bradley it was um, the Cuban lady she was telling well, they split a guy actually, in half. no it was actually Jill Jill yeah, she did watch that recently she, yeah. she told me about yeah. it yeah. Yeah, that movie's hardcore. Y'all, if y'all are into like Native American history and stuff like that, and then horror as well, it's it's a it's a really good like B horror movie kind of thing. Like it, it's pretty good. Okay, who's in it? Um, uh, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that was you who was telling us about this. Yeah, he's one of my favorite actors. Don't they split a dude in half? Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty fucked. We should watch. This. <laughs> do you have Tubi? Yep. I should. sure do. I fuck with Tubi so heavy. Really? I love it. Man, they have some really cool horror movies. I want to say, like, they have, like, a lot of, like, random stuff like this and, like, a lot of, like, 90s and 2000s okay. horror. Okay, okay. Like, stuff that, like, Valentine or stuff, stuff like okay. that. Yeah. All right, so what are some of your favorite horror movies, then? Um, <sighs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of my favorites. Like the OG one? The OG. Really? Okay. Yeah. I love Rob Zombie films, so House yeah, of a Thousand yeah. Corpses um, is one of my favorite. Like the, I watched that movie way too young. I wanted, <laughs> I was, I was eight, <laughs> I was eight or nine, and I, I had a very unsupervised childhood. Yeah. Um. So I just saw what I saw. Yeah. And it just it shaped me. I feel that. Um. But I grew up on on like classic horror. So my grandpa used to take care of me a lot. Mm -hmm. So I grew up watching like TCM, okay. like Turner Classic okay. Movies. Yeah, yeah. So I grew up on like vincent price yeah and um like boris karloff and bella lugosi mm -hmm. and so i have a deep deep appreciation for all the classics oh yeah mm -hmm. dang i miss turner classic movies i would oh. turn that on late at night and just some random black and white movie. especially like during like october like yeah. that's and that's also what got me into like edgar Allan poe and mm -hmm. just the like vincent price did a series of edgar Allan poe films based on his poetry and his short stories you know and those are some of like the most iconic yeah horror films of all time yeah like you think those black and white movies wouldn't age well like oh surely this would oh, be shit oh they're but beautiful they're, yeah they're incredible they're beautiful i mean to this day and this isn't like a this isn't a um universal horror movie but night of the living dead by yeah, george romero yeah. 
That is one of the it's most really good. It makes you anxious. Yeah. Like you will like have yeah. goosebumps and you it. will like you find yourself like scooting back yeah. because it's so slow and it's it's a true slow burn. Yeah. It's so you get anxiety watching it. Yeah, because they depend more on the storytelling than like the special effects and shit mm -hmm. like that. And it's it's just it's so sad how it ends and now knowing that it was literally like Didn't he create zombies with that? Oh no! Yeah, yeah, it was the I first mean, it, zombie movie. It was one of the first of like the traditional zombie. Yeah. One of the original zombie films was White Zombie, that starred Bella Lugosi, which is about voodoo. The one, Kirk. Yeah, Hammett, yeah. What this guitar has? <laughs> Kirk Hammett's guitar is like a white zombie. Oh, okay. Cool. There you go. Is that what? It, um. I keep hearing these little kids. It's throwing me off. Did you like Stranger Things? Mm -hmm. Did you ever y'all watch the new season? Hell yeah. Yeah, that shit smacked. I was kind of <laughs> like, was it season three? The one that ended in the mall. Yeah, season like three. That, yeah, that one, like the first half of that season, I was kind of bored, but it ended strong. And so I was like, it took me a while to start this season. I was like, oh, I don't know if I care that much, but I'm glad I did. This shit, the season smacked. I'm looking forward to part two of this season. I feel like I'm wearing a Hellfire Club shirt right now. Oh shit, I didn't yeah, see that. Yeah. I was trying to wonder what that was. I kept on looking at it. That's Man, sick. I fucking love that movie. Yeah. I mean, show. It yeah. is good. <laughs> it really, really it took me somewhere else. <laughs> what is this? White Zombie? White Zombie. It's Bella Lugosi. I eventually want to get a portrait of just Bella Lugosi as he is. Like, um, like so. In the movie? Not um, just as he was, like, as an actor, just like a traditional portrait of him. Um, so this is actually really sad. So he's. He is Dracula. Uh -huh. you know, he is the Count, you know, and that's it kind of pitted him into just that role. Mm -hmm. So as Boris, oh, okay. as Boris Karloff, who played Frankenstein, they, they like that was like the, the major them. films that came out in the 30s. I yeah. Believe. Um, but as Boris Karloff's career took off, it took off because he was in prosthetics. Mm -hmm. So you really couldn't see his face. Yeah. Um, but Bela Lugosi, his face was Dracula forever. So he almost got pigeonholed into that role. Yeah, as like a he, character actor. Like thing. as he started aging in his career, his career essentially got stumped because of Dracula. It was his biggest success, but it was also his biggest drawback. Yeah. To the point to where he was almost taking on jobs just because he was Dracula. Yeah. As yeah. Dracula. So when he passed, they buried him in his count costume, Dang. even though it was almost his biggest regret. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Dang, that's although sad. I love him as Dracula and I would love to have that. I would get a different iteration of Dracula, yeah. and Dracula, and I just want Bela Lugosi on me. I feel like I don't know. He he really needs that. Yeah, I don't that know. Kind I, of I love him as an actor. Yeah, yeah. but I yeah. I would love to immortalize him. But okay, just not I've as... actually never seen that White Zombie movie. I'm gonna have to check it's it out. Cool. It's pretty cool. It's really? pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, it's um from I want to say 20s, 30s. Okay, it's old. Yeah, I fuck with those old movies. So. Oh yeah, man, there was a really cool picture I had. I was going if you had Facebook, I was going to send you. And it was a uh, Candyman. The actors, mm -hmm. Candyman, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, um, Leatherface, and Michael Myers. It was pretty All cool. All the actors? Game. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming it was in the 90s because Candyman came out in the 90s. This is like, hold on. Must have been a hard-ass picture, though. It was pretty cool. <laughs> There's but this she didn't one have Facebook, so I couldn't send it to her. Of Christopher Lee, Vincent Price, and Peter Cushing. Oh, damn. Sir Christopher Lee? Yes. Yeah. Oh, dude. Some goats right John there. John Carradine, yeah. Like, these are, like, the true masters of, like, horror. Yeah. That's really cool. I love Vincent Price so much. I love him so much. I got to meet his daughter one year. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. I go to this thing. Oh, I haven't been in a few years, but there's a horror convention called Texas Frightmare in Dallas. And... His daughter Victoria Price was doing a seminar just to speak about her dad. Oh damn! And so I literally sat. There. I like left my whole friend group, and I was like, "Peace! I gotta listen to this woman." <laughs> and she was just. It was just a seminar of her. Just it was a slideshow of just her talking about his career mm -hmm. and behind the scenes in her childhood. Seeing oh, her, like that must have been like cool. to her like that was just dad, and yeah, she would just go yeah, to work. Person. Yeah, and it wasn't until later on that she realized like no, dad's like an icon. Mm -hmm. So like, it was just really fucking cool. So we gotta go to that next year. Roy, I would love to. Don't play. Does it uh, take place in October? No, it's the halfway point. But so they always oh, okay. do it the halfway point between Halloween. Uh, okay, okay. So it's always in May. Okay. A end of April, beginning of I May. I would have gone this year. Hmm? I don't know why we didn't. Oh, there was something else. We went to Phoenix. 
Yeah, I had to choose. Yeah, yeah with the Phoenix. Uh, but I would go next year. But it's super cheap. It's like 75 bucks for the full week. And it's in Dallas, down. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, is it kind of like a, just like a horror comic con mm-hmm. kind of thing? It's exactly like that. Okay. Um, Damn, they have badass. like panels. They have screenings. Um, you can meet the actors. They have signings. Sometimes they'll have tattoo walls where they have tattoo artists strictly only doing horror, horror themed tattoos. What's it called? Uh, Texas Frightmare. Okay. You can buy figures, VHS tapes, That's independent sick. art. It's the best. I'm looking into that. The cast of Scream was there this year, right? The cast of Scream was thing? there. Oh, um, sure. The last time I went, the cast of Stranger Things was there. Ooh. So, oh, no, yeah. That one. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've gotten to meet, like, Elvira, Linda Blair. Like, all these are just iconic people. Yeah. Um, I got to meet George Romero before he died. Oh, damn. I got to meet uh, Dario Argento, who is one of my favorite Italian filmmakers. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's sick. I'm looking at that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's 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 very it's it's the biggest horror convention out here. Mm-hmm. Besides like Monster Con and stuff like that. Dang, I haven't even heard of Monster Con. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm slacking on my horror con. Get on, dude. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Where's that one at, though? Um, those are in California. Oh, oh okay, yeah. of course. Mm-hmm. I would like one day to go to uh, Comic Con. Yeah, oh, I would love yeah. Comic Con. Yeah, I, I need to go just once. Those are expensive too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just to see all the cosplays, honestly. Like oh, people go yeah. all out on that shit. That'd be yeah. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, I do. But I think we're gonna have to wrap this one up here soon. This is a good I, one. I, I really appreciate fun. you coming. Hell yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah. Uh, this was fun. When uh, anything coming up? Anything you need to promote? Uh, I would love first. Sorry, I'd love to have you back on. Hell yeah, I'd be down in a few weeks, months. I think in a few months would I'm be pretty cool. Down. So. Sick, I really yeah. enjoyed this one. Thank you. Yeah, for yeah. Me. This is a good time. I was You've I was pretty me. nervous. I was not a fan of vegan leather, but now I am. Yeah, plant based vegan leather. Keep okay, plant. None based. of that plastic shit. Yes. There you go. <laughs> the cactus leather. I'm a fan. You sold me. Hell yeah. So yeah, anything to promote? Anything um, coming out, man? I don't have any concrete dates to promote except for that Lubbock Live Festival. I'll be out there with a couple of new. That's designs. the 17th, right? The 17th. This yeah. is September. Yeah. I'll be out there with a booth, so come check it out. Feel that cactus leather for yourself. See how soft that shit is. Have you ever worked with like Casapora leather at the art trail? Mm mm. You should. I mean, just she's really cool. Okay. Um, Studio three, I believe. Studio Casp- three. Okay. Casapora. Okay. Yeah, she's really cool. Okay. Yeah. Shit, I'll check. Te- I'll check her out. Where can they follow you at? Uh, follow. My personal Instagram is Nathan Higdon H I G D O N, and then the bag account is Pomona Bags. There you go, people. Jen? Oh, yeah. Um, follow Lords of Film on Instagram. Lords of Film with the Z. Hit us up on Spotify, on Apple. Give us reviews. Give us a five-star review. We have to listen to a podcast first. Um, follow me on Texas Chainsaw Alchemist. Um, that's my hair account. And hella soft if you want to. And subscribe to their YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, there, there you go. go. We're, um, yeah, let me, let me break it down a little bit for you guys. <laughs> Snake Pit. The Snake Pit Rattlesnake Roy is the YouTube channel, and that is what this account is called. So that's what you can search on Spotify and iTunes. Jen has loads of film. You have to search that differently on iTunes and Spotify, but it is on the Snake Pit YouTube channel. Everything's on the Snake Pit YouTube channel. Loads of film, the Snake Pit Rattlesnake Roy, and Pirate Radio. Pirate Radio and Loads of Film are their own things audio wise, but yes, like Jen said, please uh, listen, rate, and review because. Uh, and then uh, if you watch YouTube, please subscribe uh, and then um, comment. Yeah, and like. Like, comment. It, that we need the interactions. Comment on our Instagram post. Comment on Twitter. I just made a Pirate Radio Twitter account. So if you can follow that, people. Now we're going to have to make a Lords of Film Twitter account. I don't want a Lords of Film Twitter. I'll run that one. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I I'm really going to run that one. So I run all of it, but yeah, we'll make it. It, we're gonna make that um i'm gonna make a, everything on everything's on facebook under the snake pit around snake roy i hope that's not too confusing but please just interact with us that's all we ask yeah um, that helps out so much yes um follow him buy his stuff check him out yes sir interact again please and um thank you guys and we'll see you guys next time sick Later.